helps um, it run smoother. Yeah. If I click the camera off. Yeah, and I'm going to be driving, so. All right. Well, we are live now. So I would like to welcome you all to this week's Threads of Wisdom, uh, hosted by Children of the Crossroads, uh, ATC. Uh, the Threads of Wisdom was created by the Golden Thread Grove in Idaho. It is a teaching tool for your year and a day pagan basics. Each week that you attend, you will receive an image of the topic we've discussed. Uh, the Golden Thread Grove has requested that these images not be distributed to anyone that has not participated in a discussion on a particular topic. And at the end of the year, you will have 52 cards that can also be used as a divination tool. Uh, here's those cards I was talking about. Yay, cards. We got lots of cards. So we, we, we say collect them all like it's a, a Wicked or a Pokedex. Um, and this week we are up to uh, week discussion number 18, which is rituals. Um, and I will go ahead and bring on the picture of this week's uh, card or subject. Give me one second here. <clears throat> I even have it zoomed in this week. Are you guys able to see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and just take a look at it and see what kind of first impressions we get from it. Anyone want to take the mantle on this one? Nope. We have someone trying to join us. <clears throat> Hello, Michelle. We are just looking at this week's card. It is ritual, so I'm going to click back to that. Thank you for joining us. Are you Hi, able Michelle. to see it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Hello. So no one has commented yet, so anyone who wants to feel free to step in. It reminds me of the priest on the exorcist. Lola says it reminds her of the priest on the exorcist. That was that was where I went. It was not necessarily the priest from the exorcist, but it's very like Catholic priests. Yes, to me. that's that's exactly what I got. And if you look, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but he's even wearing a cassock. Yep. And they have, I very much got the Catholic priest feeling as well when I looked at this. Uh, which I thought was interesting being that they didn't uh, put up a picture of a high priest and a high priestess together at it, during it. Exactly. And I, I almost wonder, though, how much that's intentional just as a way to to yoke it in and be like, look, rituals are rituals. Doesn't matter where they come from. That's what I said. That's exactly what Lola had said. Because Silas didn't like the Catholic overtones. And yep. I liked the Catholic overtones because I like Catholic mass. And uh, um, I said, but I think it's supposed to make us discuss that doesn't matter who does the ritual. It's well, we all do kind of the same thing. Well, and I was raised Catholic and I went to all Latin mass when I was young. So I don't have the best feelings um, regards to Catholic mass and priests. Nothing. Uh -huh. ever happened. Yeah, I, I wasn't one of those people that went unreported or anything like that. I just <laughs> never, it just never spoke to me. But isn't it almost like that? That says something that like you feel you have to. You said that like it wasn't me. I wasn't. It just wasn't for me. Yeah, that says something itself. Uh, Rayo had. Did you have any comments on it? Oh, I'm suddenly focused now. Um, I'm musing, and you know, I doodle while I listen. Um, I, I think it's very um, secular. I think it's very. It looks nothing like a ritual I would ever do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. It's got a pretty cool chalice on it, though. I will give it that. Huh? I will give it that. Said so it does have a pretty cool chalice on it. I, I will give it credit on that. 
I think it's more of an organized religion type ritual. So because even in the Wicca, we wear the robes, maybe not the same mm -hmm. color, but we wear our robes and have our cords and our tabards. So it's very organized to me. It's uh, but ritual can come into in so many different. Uh, this is very ceremonial uh ritual but there's also rituals we do on you know in nature and rituals you do um you know kind of uh what do you call it um impromptu you okay, know little person those, little personal rituals or personal rituals so i think that's just one aspect that obviously it's an interesting image that they chose yeah because it does bring up a little bit of like uh okay <laughs> mm -hmm. I know when I first started 9 million years ago, you know, you're learning everything just has to be just right. You know, it's all got to be, oh, well, I have to have my special robe. Oh, I have to have, you know, all this stuff. And then as, as at least in my practice, as you kind of evolve, um, it's gotten much less formal. You know, there's certain things that I definitely do like to dress up for. There's certain things that I really do like to make very ceremonial right um but i know for my my everyday um it's very casual michelle what did you get off of it oh i i kind of just got some like projective energy coming off of it you know it's got the hands out like like giving or receiving so huh. that's a definite interesting take that I wouldn't have gotten off of there. And I appreciate the I, I always appreciate the different perspectives and viewpoints on these. Absolutely. May, makes it look at it differently. Like, OK, hold on. Yeah. Um, well, looking at the notes here, what they say is, you know, I stopped sharing already. Um, that it talks about ritual structure, how to put things together. Um, which, you know, we just had a Sabbath over the weekend. And I, you know, I know that we had set up for our coven a little ritual. That was different than, you know, any other ritual we do throughout the year so that we can, you know, change things up and be more appropriate for whatever energy is trying to be expressed or felt through that ritual. Because we, I know we have our normal coven rituals and how things run. And then I also know that we change things up um, appropriately to harness the energy that we're going for. And, you know, that's maybe the idea of what to set up as the you know, if you want to use the Catholic term, the sermon or the message that is trying to be portrayed or the activity to be done. Mm -hmm. And, they, you know, maybe that's how you think how to put things together. What are you going to try to do to get that feeling across that you're trying to express or have them experience? Um, another thing they talk, they talk about here is daily rituals. Uh, what are some of your guys' daily rituals that you guys do to get your day going or to um, harness the energy that you need? Do you guys have daily rituals that you guys do? Yeah. I, um... I typically uh, have started a daily ritual now that the weather has gotten better to get exercise. So I take my dog for a walk, but I can't have my morning coffee, which is also my morning ritual until I have walked for it now. So I enjoy the walk and I enjoy nature along the way. And I talk to the plants and I thank nature and um, I collect things along my path now in the morning. 
Very cool. Are you storing them all in a, in a similar location so that you can kind of build the energy? Yeah, I have. Um, I'm drying them all, and and I have like jars that I label with the different plants that I that I gather. Um, very cool. That's very cool. Uh, how do I find a person? I like to light a candle um, for Hikate every, every evening. Alola says she likes to light a candle every evening for Hecate when it starts getting dark. Mm. <clears throat> I've done a couple different ones that um, obviously right now I do devotional in the mornings, most mornings, not every morning. Um, I do little things myself too, but they change a little bit. Like I like to draw a tarot card that doesn't always happen every single morning. Um <clears throat> But like, I like candles a lot and I don't really have a space set up right now for me to set a candle. I need to fix that. <clears throat> yeah, it's funny because this is the second time it's come up today. So obviously there's a ping going on like, hey, hey, you need some daily stuff. Hi, uh, I used to do a flame keeping group for Bridget, which was really fun because that would go from uh, sunset to sunset. And it was a group of 19 of us. So I believe the 20th day was when it was said that Bridget kept the flame herself. And that was fun. Um, and that's a little bit less of a daily ritual because it was more like a, you know, 21 day, but uh, 20 day, but it was still really cool. Um, and then I have other rituals that would be the more secular rituals, like the stuff that people don't think of is ritualized stuff. But when you do your routines, there's a fine line between what's just routine and what can be ritual. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I know like for me and Samuel, what we're doing is we're talking about daily rituals we do for ourselves. Uh, to get our day going or to help us honor deity or whatever we need to do. Um, what I personally do is when I take my shower, I have a little cleansing ritual I do for myself. And I, I allow anything that's hanging on to me uh, physically, metaphysically, anything like that to be washed off with the water and to start fresh every day and let it go down the drain. And it's just a little like little two minute thing I do for myself during my shower. Um, another thing that we do in our coven is we have a daily devotional. Um, that becomes in a sense a ritual because it, you know, it tells us it gets a start of how we want to get our day going and it holds us to account uh, by making a offering and a promise to the Lord and Lady. Sharing that again. Uh, Sam, you're saying when he shower or when they shower, uh, they dance and sing in the shower in Apollo Sun Life if it's day and use it to cleanse before rituals or at night. Yeah, I do some of the shower cleansing like meditation rituals too. Um, and I don't do as many baths as I might like, but when I do, I like to do a little ritualized thing on those. I have an awesome bathtub. I just don't use it often enough. Uh, our, our bathtub is much too small for me, unfortunately. Uh, I'm a pretty big person. I know that one of the things that I do every day is a uh, practice of beauty. There's um, lots of different traditions that speak on this. There's Native American traditions. There's various different pagan traditions. But it's a concept of, of literally walking in beauty, where you make the effort every day to, um, to see the beauty uh, and to draw it in and to accept it and to recognize it and acknowledge that. 
So something every day, no matter how stressful or whatever else is going on, to go, oh my gosh, you know, what a beautiful dandelion or what a, you know, what a beautiful whatever, and just acknowledge that. And then um, a practice of gratitude uh, every day, that at the end of every day, there's a gratitude prayer that I do with my, my son and my granddaughter, where it's just to say thank you. Um, and we're kind of all inclusive here. So it's, you know, thank you to all, to God and goddess and all the creative energies of the universe. You know, thank you to our ancestors, spirit guides and animal guides. Thank you. And we just talk about what we're grateful for that day. And see, and we do that in our morning devotionals. Not only do we give our intents, but we do gratitudes. And we, you know, we have your ones that you're grateful every day, but then we try to personalize it each and every day of something that's happened or will be happening that we're grateful for. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know for me and for Lola, I'll speak on her behalf as well. Um, with the last year of everything, it was really nice to do this because we were able to find things to, to be grateful for, even when it seemed like everything just sucked around us. Mm-hmm. It's been yeah. an interesting habit. Very, very helpful. Well, I noticed, uh, and me and Zeta and Lola talk about this pretty regularly, uh, that when we don't do it, we notice it, and the day just doesn't flow the same way when you break your personal rituals. Mm-hmm. And then when you get back on do- and, and back to doing it, you know, everything reharmonizes for yourselves, and, it, you know, it gets everything back on track. Um Something else they're commenting here is understanding the steps of effective spells and ceremonies, uh, which kind of harkens back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, making sure that that ritual is appropriate, is sending the appropriate energy or uh, feeling that you're striving for. And so, you know, obviously we're not going to go do a sun ritual on in bulk. Or, you know, or, you know, where it's, you know, uh, in honoring the, you know, that's a light, but it's not one we're going to do in the middle of the night kind of thing. You're not going to do a sun sun ritual in the middle of the night. You're not going to, like, I don't know, what are some other things that you wouldn't do for an inappropriate ritual? Whenever I need to connect or separate myself from the mundane, I light incense in my candle to create a holy space and sometimes just well to place my concerns and intentions before the divine. Yep. Yeah, that's the big thing, Sammy, is making things routine. Yeah, don't do a salon ritual for Beltane. There's a good one. But you know what? Um, because it is the mirror of Samhain, you can actually do a uh, ancestors and people of past ritual for Beltane. Because they are the mirrors of each other. Yeah, I was just gonna say that you could you could technically do that because the the veil is thin at both times of the year. Yep. Yeah. So it, as funny as it sounds, that one actually isn't as uh, abstract as you might think. I think it would actually almost be interesting just because of that fact to like. Do like a topsy turvy, you know, like thing like that. Hmm. I know, food for thought for later. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I think Got the old down. Hint, hint. I think the odd topsy turvy though would be the fertility of the plants because kind of in the fall everything is dying off and you know it's going to sleep for winter. <laughs> But so, you, but you also do have your winter flowers and winter plants that start their cycle at that point. Very true, we do. And you know, we forget about that because we're always thinking about spring and when everything's coming back up. But we do have those those special plants that grow throughout the winter and become harvestable in spring, like asparagus. Where was I at? 
um, well, this kind of talks about what they're saying next is how to work energies. So that kind of makes sense. You know, how do you work the energies to make the different output or outcome that you're looking for? How do you get the ball rolling to uh, manifest the uh, desired effect? You know, if if you're going to have a big, if you're going to have a somber, more laid back, maybe don't don't do a big, huge dance number. <laughs> But however, if you know if you want to get you know everyone up and active and the energy flowing, put a dance uh, portion into your ritual so that the you know the energy gets flowing that way and uh, just kind of let you break loose. Okay. 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 Well, what Lola's saying is a big part of the ritual is the energy of the people involved. Uh, perfect love, perfect trust, knowing that you, whatever you guys are doing, it's going to be done in safety and in, and in a respectful manner to everyone involved. What uh, what me and Lola and Zeta are going to do in our coven is going to be different than what we're going to do with people in the public, that we don't know their backgrounds, we don't know what you know, their comfort zones are. We're not going to sit there and go some deep, intense psychological dive for 80 people that are just here, here in the public. We don't know. Yeah. What do. We don't know what that's going to do for them. Go ahead. Sorry, Danielle. No, I was just agreeing with you. And I think that's something that is like um, a disconnect because people go to a public ritual and are expecting a different type of ritual than what they often get. Um, I've seen lots of people have complaints one way or another. It's too serious. It's not serious enough. And it's like, well, if you get to know people, you might see the different side of it. Because <clears throat> our rituals vary depending on who you're delivering it to. Because you don't, you don't put all the cards on the table for the public. You can't. Well, no. It, you know, that there, it's a different kind of perfect love and perfect trust. You, you're, you're perfectly trusting that everything you're going to do is be appropriate for everyone not personalized to you. You know, I'm, I'm not, we're not going to have a public event and have me, you know, have me walk in the men in center of circle sky clan. That's not going to be appropriate for a lot of people. Yeah. Also, if there's no warning, that's a big shock for people. So like, you know, and, and consent is important. Um, and part of that consent is, is whether or not you're going to see someone naked in front of you. <laughs> Where I, I was listening to an interesting podcast um, talking about the do's and don'ts of ritual, Oops. and they were talking whether or not a uh, sex toy is an appropriate wand to use during ritual. Mm. And and if you know if they were saying it could be if everyone is going into that ritual knowing that this is going to be presented instead of someone just whipping it out in the middle of hey by the way. Welcome, welcome, guys. This is what we're working with tonight. So, Bal uh, Balbo could use a, a dildo for a yes. ritual. Yeah, if, if we're doing a Balbo ritual, okay, we might have a dildo. If we're working with Artemis, probably not. Yeah, I don't think that would go over very well. <clears throat> <laughs> you know, it's make make sure you that you are um, facilitating the correct energy with the correct uh, ritual and for the audience. Michelle or Sammy, you guys have anything to comment on? Sammy's typing. Oh, and hi, everybody. If you didn't know, yeah. I'm over here in the Lazy Boy chair. Lola's having some back issues today and is in a lot of pain, so she is reclining in our recliner. So you might hear her in the distance, but that's why I'm on camera. And she's loopy. It's interesting. When I did a, I was hosting a series of circles for the Wheel of the Year in Tucson, and I specifically wanted to address, it was for women only, it was a women's circle, and I wanted to address sensuality in the Beltane ritual. And um, specifically stated, you know, we are going to be talking about sensitive issues, intimate issues, and there will be, um, how did I put it? 
basically that there could be nudity, that there could be touching. Uh, not inappropriately, obviously, but you know, if you don't want to be touched, you need to let us know. Mm-hmm. And it was, um, we had a wonderful space to work with, really amazing art and, and all kinds of stuff. And it's so funny because even, even with that, it's like, okay, you know, I want you to touch your breasts. I want you to touch your, you, you know, the places that give you pleasure and acknowledge the fact that this is okay, that this is a part of humanity, that this is whatever. And it was so funny because even in a circle, at that point at Beltane, we'd done a couple of rituals together. It was the same people who were coming, you know, mostly week after week. Full disclosure had been given. And even so, it was still like, okay, okay. (laughs) What? what, what, Because because you don't know until you know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It was just, it was really interesting. I had these visions of exactly how it was going to go and how it was going to be planned and how it was going to, you know, roll out and how we were going to use the space and the sensual dancing and I had everything all set up and, you know, there was privacy if you wanted privacy to go have a moment and there was, you know, you could dance in the circle or you could, uh, you know, whatever you wanted to do, there was space for it. We had this wonderful, wonderful space that had these living art um, caves, for lack of a better term. So if you wanted to have a private moment within the sacred space and just experiment, you know, feel yourself, find yourself, if you just see what felt good, allow yourself that freedom. There was that space. It was just, it was interesting that again, even with that, even with the permission, because a lot of it is permission, mm-hmm. uh, even with that permission given, how people are still afraid to allow themselves that this is okay, this is okay, this is okay. Well, well, we live in a society where sexuality and sensuality is repressed, you know, mm-hmm. uh, for a lot of people, you know, you you do these acts to make babies, not because you enjoy it. You're not supposed to enjoy it. And it's like, no, 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 no. Life is to be enjoyed, you know, c- celebrate it. But for a lot yeah. of people, they just aren't comfortable with that. And you have to be aware um, of what people's comfort level are. Like me personally... I have no issues being sky clad. I, w- I would actually prefer to live life sky clad. But I know for a lot of people, they're not going to feel real comfortable with that. Walking up to me, hi, I'm Salinus. Uh, you're, you're what, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if a complete stranger, I have no problem walking up to him because I'm very comfortable with that. But, the you know, I, I have to be respectful. They may not be. And be aware of that. And like you said, Rehad, it's even though people know and are given permission, it's still interesting to see who is uh, comfortable enough with themselves to actually put that into use in action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and um, it was interesting. The feedback I got back was it was positive, but it was just very, very interesting to see. Um, The most consistent feedback was uh, the comments where people would say, I was surprised at how, um, not embarrassed, there's another word that I'm forgetting that that they were using, but how they were, like they weren't allowed, like they were going to be, they were going to get in trouble, like they were, you know, to, to just allow themselves that moment of experimentation, of discovery, that they would be some kind of um, punitive punishment that they would be in trouble, that they would be, it was bad. And that that was the the thing that they found that they had discovered in themselves as part of that, that ritual that I did um, was their reaction. So well, it didn't, it didn't go the way I had anticipated or that I had seen mainly because people were so surprised at their own reaction to you know, why am I feeling guilty about touching my cheek? If I like my eyebrow rubbed, why am I feeling guilty about rubbing my eyebrow? You know, it's an eyebrow. That's really interesting, too, because when you put those, like, the, the two things together, where one is not generally seen of as being a sensual thing or a sexual thing, and then, but yet you're like, why, why would you feel guilty? It's just part of you it's all skin and just it's you it's your body and that was the whole point of the ritual that night and i'm I'm, i don't want to dominate time but it was like 
we are sensual beings. We are sensual creatures. We like to be touched. You know, what are some ways, if you're feeling the need to, to give self-love, if you're feeling the need to um, address that need and you're, you know, you're having a bad day or whatever, you just want to feel it, how can you do it and allow yourself that, that feeling? And some, you know, sometimes it is just as simple as rubbing your eyebrow, or maybe you have a favorite spot behind your ear, or, you know, maybe there's the little collar of your neck, or there's all these innocent places in our bodies where we just like being touched there. I know somebody really loves being touched on the back of their knee. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like all these, and that was part of the ritual. Elbows. Yeah. They just like their elbows rubbed, and it's like, you right. know, for somebody, someone who did you, like, your elbow, well, uh, okay, I'll touch your elbow for you. Yeah, exactly. So it was it was a powerful ritual, but it was interesting the reaction to and that guilt that um, am I allowed? Mm -hmm. Is this okay? Can I make myself feel good just by rubbing whatever you know? It was cool. Well, like uh, changing it up a little bit, but talking about comfort zones and uncomfort zones. Um, I, you know, I'm very comfortable in the in the physicals, um, but for me, I have a lot of trouble on the very deep introspective uh, ancestry work, ancestral work. It's not my comfort zone, and I have I get I have to remind myself that this is what I'm, you know, wanting to learn and explore more. So don't get hesitant about it. And so you know, I'm on the whole other end of the spectrum where it's, you know the physical is whatever, but the spiritual um like i said ancestral work it's not my comfort zone and you know that's how we have to expand our horizons and get us out of our comfort zones to allow us to grow and that's what a good ritual should do is it should either uh challenge you or it should enhance whatever you're already working with mm -hmm. michelle you keep on muting do you have something to say no I was just okay. quiet. Okay, I just see you muting it and unmuting, so I was, didn't want to cut you off. Um, well, I'm going to put the picture back up on screen. And what would you guys get if you saw this as a divination piece? I'm really curious to hear this because, like I said, I did not get the, the best feeling when I first looked at it. So... Lola, if you got that as a divination drawing, what would you? Uh, I think it was right now, and well, <laughs> not right at this moment, but uh, for you know, currently, I think it, it says to me that um, I need to get back into the habit of doing more rituals uh, because of quarantine, um, we relaxed on our rituals and stuff. So to me, this means, and me and Zeta, we're just talking about that yesterday, I think, trying to get, you know, it's been a, it's been a hot minute. Yeah. And uh, so I think it means let's start doing stuff like that. Let's start, you know, and it's time for me to get into it, too. Were you guys able to hear her? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, perfect. It's interesting that you say that, Lola. It's so funny because everywhere I've lived hosting ritual and being a, you know, being, making space has been such a huge part of my practice. And since moving to Spokane, I've just really been a hermit. Yeah. I've been a major hermit where I just don't want to have, I'm not sure I want to open that space. Ray Ohad, I didn't know you were in Spokane with us. We, uh, us and Zeta are also Spokane people. Yeah, I'm in, I moved here in, um, 2018, and I've been lurking. I've been lurking for years. Huh. And my schedule has finally allowed me to start attending these online meetings, uh, mainly because I um, I threatened to dangle my children over a vat of hungry crocodiles if they didn't give me the space. <laughs> hmm, how big is this vat? That for people? <laughs> you know, just enough of the hungry crocodiles. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been seeing you guys and, and looking at the 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 wine podcast you do on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
so I've just been I've been working. OK, well, well, it's wonderful to know that you're local with us. And when we have a local event, we will have to let you know. Thank you. That would be awesome. Um, and let me go back to the check. I, th I th see it flashing. I wonder if someone has commented. Um, yes, Sammy has the, their hand up, too, so. Sammy, go ahead and answer. Sorry, there's a lot of buttons to press. <laughs> so I um, I raised my hand because I wanted to give more detail on the one where I said, like, come back to the altar. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, if I were to get this in a reading, like, the first thing that would jump to my mind is, like, come back to the altar, do more, like, spiritual work, make more, like, do more rituals, do more routines, connect with the divine in more ways mm -hmm. because you're seeking guidance when the answers are right in front of you and you're just not asking for help very cool i like that uh, also a tendency i have like <laughs> i know like as a maybe lola can relate to this as a capricorn i don't like to ask for help unless i have to yeah oh god yeah <laughs> And at work, most people just step in because they know, like, I'm not going to ask for it unless it's a, it's too late. Like, well, and, and Lola doesn't ask for help. She just tells you to do things. She's a little different in that aspect. I volunteer. Yeah. People. yeah. <laughs> yeah she, she's a little more direct. <laughs> um, hey, it works. Yeah. No judgment. Well, little, but uh, <laughs> um, Michelle or Zeta, you want to? Uh, speak your piece and I'll finish up at, at the end of what I get. I, I'm still getting like uh, like that energy blessing. I, I get like, I don't know, when I see this card, I get that my cup is being blessed. I like that. Yep. So, I feel that same right energy. Now, so, so divination, what, what like will that tell you? Me, what is the message you'd be getting? Yeah, I, I feel like for me right now, I feel like my cup is being blessed because I have given it room to receive more information. So I'm being blessed. My cup is being filled with new knowledge. Very good. Seder? I feel too like there's a little bit of a give and take on it. Um, like you're receiving blessings, but you can also give blessings. Is that two hands up thing? Um, the rituals, like it's time to step up and come to the altar and to start doing your rituals, perhaps sharing them with others. Um, even if you're not necessarily sharing them with others, there are other ways that you could share that knowledge with others. If you're taking pictures and sharing them on Instagram or doing a quick video for TikTok or something like that, all of that is still the dispensing of information. Uh, but you are allowed to just have personal rituals as well. Um, I definitely feel like the cup is a blessing of sorts, but um, it's I, I definitely feel this give and take with that cup because once it's blessed, you take it and you drink it and you take the blessings in and then you put it back and it can be blessed again. I like that. It kind of it, it kind of drives with what I'm getting where it's telling me that I need to be more present for the community. And I need to put myself out there more and look to run a public ritual. Be, be, be a spokesperson, a mouthpiece. Which so is, me. Sorry, sorry, I need to interrupt. Um, no. Maybe I like this is coming from like my former like Christian past, but um, the cup to me is very much like about not just blessing but community so i thought it was funny that you said that like doing public ritual and doing with community and sharing because i really do think like for me the cup is often a symbol of like sharing that blessing and being in community and having ritual together um and so that is so important and i think you know in in a day and age where like a lot of people are doing things like fighting for social justice and like on the forefront of different issues it's important to come back to rituals in the community to heal from all that like angst and like frustration and 
anger. I love that, Sammy. And also, um, because I think we are all jonesing to get back out in public because we've been doing online and online is great. Yeah. Or else I wouldn't have met I wouldn't have met Sammy, you know, or whatever. And that's awesome. But we are craving to be in the community and share that energy again yeah. in, in the in person. Yep. Just being able to reach out, you know, and see that you're affecting someone and walk over and give them a hug and tell them that you know what? Um, that we're glad that we did what we did because obviously it affected you in a way that you need to be affected. And it's much more personalized being able to do that in person. And so I know we have been chomping at the bit to get out in public and be with people again, where we had our first in face, uh, face to face Kevin wide uh, celebration this last weekend in over a year. Where we had everyone in person and it was awesome. It was small, mind you, we have a small coven. Yeah. But one of our coven members, I won't say any names, stood up, has 500 kids, so it seemed like there was like a lot of us. But it was <laughs> <laughs> You won't say any names, <laughs> me. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the screen again. Um, and there were some interesting notes that they had here that I wanted to touch after we did that. Uh, let me get that off the screen. Um, Think about your regular routines. Are they working? Are they working for you? Do you need to adapt them with the changes in your life from when you started doing them? Uh, then also, what is your true intent? Are you actually do are you actually doing it because you want to or because you feel you have to? Because obligation is much uh, isn't as beneficial as the desire and the want to do it. Anyone have anything to say to that? I think the last part's really important because I know I've come through times where I love doing tarot readings for myself and I try to do them most days, but sometimes I find myself in a spot where I'm just, I'm just drawing a tarot card. I'm not reflecting on how it's going to affect my day. It's I'm not actually doing anything with it. I'm just going through the motions. And that's generally a good point where I go, I should take a break from this or use a different divination method for the next month or just something. Yep. Bring Break up the, the monotony of it and make sure that it's still being special and it's still having a positive effect for you. Uh, that's why I think it's, uh, you know, your regular routines and are they working and is it time to change it up? You know, if we're doing the same thing day in, day out, but not doing anything to actually affect change. Then you need to change. You need to come up with something new. I think that's one of the struggles I have with my like, because I have a desire to have like daily routines, but I feel like that's almost like out of like guilt and obligation that I want it to be like daily and I want it to be like a perfect routine and I'm always doing it and like this is like my ideal of what I want to do but really like routines don't have to be like that like they can just be like every time that I'm overwhelmed I go do this or like when I'm going to work I do this um because th those are established patterns that help us to cope with life well, we had a really cool episode of Witches and Wine we did a couple weeks ago. Um, and our guest had come up with some personal mantras that they use. And I found it very powerful, which is it's not something that I do. And it's something I should is come up with a mantra to help with the, the stressors that we come across and to remind ourselves that it's OK to be stressed, but everything's going to work itself out. Don't become overwhelmed. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that can be part of your routine is just coming up with that that mantra, you know, get up and telling yourself that, you know, in the morning, I am wonderful. I am loved. Today will go well. That's something as simple as that. You know, you're just putting that out there, that energy. And, you know, if, they, if something, you know, uh, gets you off your routine, just I am beautiful. I am loved. Things will go well. 
you remind yourself to bring yourself back to that moment and you can and you can reset and start back over again. I like that a lot. Me too. You know, and then, like I said, that's something that's not my comfort, you know, not something that comes naturally to me. But after hearing it and hearing them use what, what they had used, I was like, you know, that's pretty freaking awesome. I can see how just by doing those things, it can really change your the flow of the day for you. Or do anyone else have anything that if we should feel we should talk about? We're coming up on an hour, so. Bueller. I don't have anything to add, I don't think. I think that ritual is so important for the development and for the health of our soul. Um, there's something about even if it's very, very simple and you only do it once a week or you, it doesn't have to be done every day, but making the space, making the intent, setting your intention and creating that ritual just to say, I'm going to be more positive or whatever you're trying to do. It doesn't have to be a big spell working. It doesn't have to be anything major, but just going into that space, going to that space emotionally, going into that space with clarity, going into that space with intention and <laughs> sitting there and having that moment where you are hopefully <laughs> at in full clarity and understanding with yourself and then with your deity of choice, your deity of, uh, you know, who you're, who is your main go-to, you know, or your main uh, go-to greater than yourself, you know, entity. Uh, and I find that um, when things are really, really hard, you know, when you're, stumbling and you just feel like gosh why am i not what message am i not getting and you're just running into roadblock after roadblock and things are really really difficult it's like well have you done that ritual have you created a space and gone through with your intention and sat down and had that moment where you're allowing yourself peace where you're allowing yourself purpose where you're allowing yourself clarity and having that moment and then see how the rest of your week goes see how the rest of your month goes I think ritual is so incredibly important, you know, for the purposes, just so that you have a moment to reflect and see. Well, and it's interesting because even though a lot of us uh, come from or practice different faiths or religions, it's interesting to see how many of them of the rituals are very, very similar in the structure that everyone can identify and at least connect with a ritual. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that have found their path in paganism or Wicca uh, come from Catholic or LDS backgrounds where ritual is very uh, tantamount to the practice. So they're able to uh, understand and connect with it easier compared to other people that are coming in and have had no ritual background. And they're like, well, what the heck are we going? What's going on here? Yeah. Well, I have added the picture into the chat, so feel free to download it, copy it. Um, Sammy, if we need to email it to you, we'll get that sent out to you. I know you usually have issues, so. I got mine and I saved it. Okay. Royal Hud, Michelle, you guys got yours? Yeah, I got mine. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get wrap it up for us. Give me one second. Got to get back to the top of the screen. It works this time. Oh, nice. Progress. <laughs> that's just interesting because I, I was like, oh, that's going to be an automatic. Email's going to need to be sent. Yep. <laughs> and I had then it worked. As well. so, I think it's because I'm my phone <laughs> <laughs> well if we have helped facilitate a spiritual experience for you today please consider donating to children of the crossroads atc to help fund events like this your gifts of any amount are greatly appreciated and donations may be tax deductible as children of the crossroads atc is a 501c3 nonprofit, and you can make your donations too when we put our paypal and our venmo on there 
Uh, any and all donations are appreciated. They, they are not required, but we definitely appreciate it. It helps us uh, get more things involved so that we can get some public events and other things going where we can have some funding to help us with that. So I would just like to thank each and every one of you for joining us this week. Um, hopefully next week Lola's feeling better and can be back with us on camera. She's always here in, in spirit and we can always hear her, but it's always nice to see her. I'm loud. <laughs> Um, and next week we next week's discussion will be get to it, get to it. Protection. And we're not talking about the protection that we're usually to, that we're usually talked to about. But condoms. Yes, condoms or <laughs> birth control. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now. And I just want to thank you all once again for joining us this week. I just click dismiss, right? What? Oh, stop the recording. Stop the recording.